Hello, I'm Karen Manticotti. Welcome to Dangerous Snacks. Today on Dangerous Snacks, five steps to a great divorce. I have a friend who says that she doesn't believe in divorce. Well, I frequently tell her there is strong evidence to show that it exists. And indeed, this is true. Divorce happens. It happens all the time. For whatever reason, our species seems to be one that does not necessarily mate for life. Now, I do believe in marriage. I believe in it so strongly, in fact, that I've been married three times. I realize that some people think that having more than one marriage is demeaning the institution. But I disagree. For me, it means that my faith in marriage is so strong that I publicly jump into it when it seems to be, at least statistically, a really bad idea. I love marriage. And I believe in working hard to make it great and fighting for it with ferocious intensity. I believe in marriage. And my wish for everyone is that they have the healthiest, happiest union that they can have. But still, divorce happens. Here are five ways to reduce its suckiness. Number one, own your part. If you don't own your own part in creating your reality, then you risk thinking of your ex-spouse as the aggressor and worse, you as the victim. You risk being trapped by a bunch of, if only he or she would, then I could, and I had no choice but to, or you left me, so now I have to, or any other victim-like thing that leaves you feeling powerless and angry, and that is not where you want to be. Figuring out your part in the ill-fated marriage dynamic and owning it is a lot less expensive, both financially and emotionally, than living like a victim. Plus, nobody really believes you when you say that nothing is your fault. Not even you. Not really. Number two, find your tribe. This one is both inspiring and heartbreaking. Just like your home and your parenting and your life, your friends may shift in divorce. The tribe that you thought was yours, the one that you counted on to support you no matter what, they may leave you, even more heartbroken if possible. They may leave you because they don't know how to act around you anymore, or because you're now kind of broke, or just because you're messing with their picture of how things are supposed to be, or maybe because having a single person around married people is a little risky. Whatever the reason, this may feel like the end of the world to you, but as always, it's not. The world will keep on turning and a new tribe will emerge for you. People who love you no matter what and who will say things like, do you need to stay with me for a while? How can I help you? Hey, you're strong. I'm so proud of you. Somehow, it will happen. You will come to know the difference between those who are strong enough to support you and those who are not. Getting a divorce is a great weeding out process. Number three, uncharge your emotions. I give this advice, although I don't always follow it. It is important to realize that divorce is a nasty process. It brings out intense self-preservation mode. Realizing this can give you some emotional distance. You're hurt and you're thinking, why are they being so mean? They once promised to love me. I don't get this. They don't even like gravy. Being targeted and bullied is tough, especially from somebody who was once your family who you once thought of as your heart. And you may start to think, what have I done to deserve this? And the answer is, it's not about what you deserve. It's about divorce and it sucks. I think it's inevitable that at some point during the divorce process, you're going to think it's not fair. Well, you're not alone. I've never heard of anyone come out of a divorce thinking that they didn't get screwed. As soon as I was able to realize that I wasn't going to be treated fairly and that the person that I had spent a lot of my life loving was not afraid to pick the meat off my bones as I lay dying in the desert, I felt much better. It's freeing, really. It's good to remember that your divorce settlement doesn't define you as you move forward. Even if you leave with nothing more than the clothes on your back, you are still in charge of your actions and your destiny. And you can do anything. Consider getting a lawyer or an advocate and let them get charged up emotionally so that you can have some inner peace. Divorce is expensive, but nothing is more expensive than losing your sense of well-being. Number four, see the big picture. Again, easier said than done. As you journey into Divorceville, somebody will inevitably say something to you like, I know it's tough now, but in 20 years, you'll be sitting at the kid's wedding thinking, oh, we did a great job raising these kids together. And you'll want to punch her in the face, but don't. They're just trying to tell you that this too shall pass. And they are right. This marriage didn't work for you, but something else will. I know you feel like you've been run over by a truck, but it won't always feel that way. 
Eventually, you will recover from the financial loss and your loss of self-esteem and from that deep, deep sadness that comes with the end of a relationship. The weight and the difficulty of this process won't last forever. Connect with the things in your life that are working. If you have children, enjoy your relationship with them. Be thankful for the health that you do have. Relate to your support network, lean on them, and be of help to other people so that you can get out of yourself a little bit. Appreciate the fact that you live in a time and a place where divorce is possible and you're okay to move on. Focus on the big picture of where you want your life to be even when, especially when, that seems so far away. Number five, get your groove back. This is the fun part. Chances are, if you're getting a divorce, you've been deeply entrenched in misery for some time. You might not even remember what your groove looks like. In fact, maybe you think you've never really been in your groove at all. But don't worry, it's never too late to embrace the groove. Here's the thing, you're never gonna be 33 or 56 or 42 or whatever age you are ever again. You have this one day, one year, one precious, precious life. Look, you got a divorce because you weren't allowed to live your best life in that marriage. So now it's time to do that. Isn't that the point? So how do you get a ticket to ride on your best life groove train? First, take good care of yourself. Eat well, sleep well, drink lots of water, go on long walks, exercise. Exercise so much that you are so tired by the end of the day that you simply fall asleep and get out of your head a little bit. Move your body. You can make yourself feel better from the outside in. Then figure out what you do really well. When was the last time you did something that made you feel on top of the world, that made you happy? Do that more. And then get in touch with your smoking hot, attractive self. Put on your favorite sweater and the jeans that hug your ass just right. And meet the world with a flirty smile, why not? Realize that all the self-doubt that comes with divorce has no place in your life. So you're not the right person for your ex, but you're the right person for yourself and probably the right person for somebody else when you're ready for that. As my mom used to say, there's an ass for every chair. You're just looking for a more comfortable seat. It's possible to emerge from divorce feeling stronger and happier than ever, to thrive in the new life that you're creating for yourself. Of course, it's also possible that divorce throws you into a downward depression spiral that you can't emerge from. But the good news is, it's up to you. Thank you.